is there a title yeah this one says live yeah This is, uh, there is that time, no, that second moving. So it's 37 seconds, 38, 39. Uh. Uh. Oh, yeah, I see, I see four. Yeah, four, four live, yeah, five. Let me see if I can use this uh, caller mic. I think the, the computer's own, uh, this thing is there. The computer's own uh, uh, microphone is there. But let me see if, uh, um, if this uh, other, the caller mic works. Huh? Get the audio. Can you hear me? You able to hear me, Shen? And uh, this audio is better than the earlier one. Okay, that's good. Yeah, because I've used this thing, other thing. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, welcome uh, all of you um, to this. What is this? This is a <laughs> this is a class. Um, I hope all of you find uh, <clears throat> these are exciting times we are living in. Um, so. Uh, this is after the long break after your internal assessment um just arranging this adjusting the audio um Um, um, so, okay, so much, uh, um, 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 yeah, so, <laughs> um, uh, I think we need some more light here, right? Um, so, uh, I have the, uh, the Ernst Block essay, uh, right here. I think, uh, the way we went about, uh, in this course, uh, where you had those, uh, topics for the, um, for the exam, internal assessment exam, and, uh, uh, and then we left out uh, Ernst Bloch uh, as well as Ernst Junger. Um, so uh, we'll begin with where we left. That is the um, that is the Junger thing uh, and the Ernst Bloch. 
um so we'll have uh, to kind of uh, complete the scene um around uh, hunger um uh, we need to because i think i think we have we have touched on something which um which uh, has too many uh, branches or sub branches or, or there's too much going around this younger text as you know ons block is also kind of addressing uh, the same thing there when he talks about the non synchronous um because the all this thing about the feudal warrior um all these things about elements from the past uh which ons block among all the marxists was open to um kind of uh, also deploying uh pre-modern um tropes pre-modern things you know pre-modern mythology uh the gothic as you know the nazis were quite into not quite into a little bit into uh reviving a uh, non-christian say celtic um imagery and symbolism and all of that i think they were building something like a temple of doom or something like that you know uh, like a pagan yeah something like that you know these are not very clear things uh, so he was open to that um so that's why uh, compared to somebody else some other marxists so so this time there are also debates within the marxists that are going on uh and ons block uh, is uh is one of the voices who kind of differs from the other marxists so the other marxists would be say someone like lukach george lukach uh let me see if i can write lukach uh i know lukach yeah okay yeah <laughs> uh george lukach um l u k c s yeah uh, george lukach so um <laughs> uh, uh, so um yeah so in that uh, one of the things uh that is there is of course hana arent maybe i referred a little bit so we'll do one essay by hana arent uh which comes slightly later um also hana arent because uh, Uh, an errand will then uh, really make us feel like we are doing not really political science but like uh, political theory uh, kind of a thing so it 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 will allow us because ons tinger is too kind of a is outlier even ons block it's a very different uh, language and style and the conceptual vocabulary is so uh, different from you know what we have been conventional um, critical theory uh, but i think uh, um, so sometimes we need to be able to think in these other conceptual terms so hana arent will allow us to do that and also the notion of masses um, that we that has been a recurring theme here and hana arent talks about that so we'll do that hana arent uh, um, uh, an errant uh, essay um so i'll give you <laughs> maybe i'll send you a link or something for that uh so we'll do that and that will clarify a lot of things uh <clears throat> right now uh today um, um i want to cover some ground uh, to kind of clarify uh, the key themes uh, around which uh, uh the debate uh, beyond hunger is taking place right uh so that's what uh, i will do in terms of trying to kind of also uh also uh also uh make uh some of the themes that hunger has highlighted appear less foreign i mean less not foreign less uh like like something from a bygone era you know today when we are living in this age of democracy and supposed peace and all of that war and the kind of themes that we see in hunger seems really foreign but i think we need to kind of open up some of the 
uh, implications some of the themes that um, that around which this is taking place. So I'll just do that in a minute. I will just uh, pause this uh, um, for a second, and I'll just be back. So I don't know how to pause it. I'll just uh, I'll just go, you know, and just be back. I, if you can, somebody can suggest, suggest me the pause uh, button. Where is it? it is? <laughs> that will be nice. I'll just be back. So, um, uh, so, um, oh, by the way, Devavati, I don't know how to take the attendance. I think you should do the attendance, which the, I think through WhatsApp that you had done earlier. So that would be nice if you can do that. Um, okay. Yeah. So, uh, actually, you know, it's very interesting here. I mean, I'm kind of getting slightly distracted with this new uh, uh, new method of uh, communicating. Can is everyone is it audible? Yeah. You can hear me. Oh, good, great, yeah, thanks. So uh, um, uh, yeah, and 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 interestingly, uh, around the time uh, in the in the well thirties, um, these kind of themes that we saw in Hunger, but which was not just in Hunger, which was generally there, um, of total immersion, uh, total immersion in say, uh, you know, in the in something like the, uh, you know, uh, the willingness to die, be a warrior, and that kind of uh, ecstatic um, transcendence, which is mediated through technology that we saw, right? And as you know, this is very heavy, this is very serious war and uh, destiny, um, uh, sacrifice. Uh, and the masses, you know, well, the masses as in the, the Vogue in German, who would be at one with the leader. All these are extremely heavy themes, you know, and, uh, and also the entire anti-Semitism and all of that. So, so one of the things that um, uh, the, the uh, though challenging it did was they were trying to think about um uh, themes through which they could maybe lampoon this entire heavy serious um larger than life kind of a, a portrayal of the ideal subject that you see in hunger a little bit in heidegger and generally in the build up to nazism build up to fascism and uh, and so the soldier um you know who is going into battle who is at one with the leader, the Furor, which is, say, Hitler, um, uh, achieves a kind of a ecstatic transcendence in which the material conditions, the sur surroundings in which 
uh, he's placed uh, doesn't really matter. So there's a kind of a um, almost like a hallucinatory uh, transcendence uh, in which uh, in which uh, basically you take off, right? Um, now sometimes it helps to to in order to if you want to puncture this. If you want to lampoon this, if you want to, uh, you know, like you, 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 you want to take the lead off this and expose this, then a little bit of a maybe a comic joke or something, uh, a joke might be good, right? <laughs> uh, so um, a laughter. So you will see uh, someone like uh, Walter Benjamin would start talking about uh, the maybe to say revolutionary potential of laughter might sound a bit too far-fetched but something like that so laughter becomes very important comedy becomes very important and uh, and you'd be surprised that american uh, slapstick humor becomes very important right films uh, comic films in fact even animation cartoons so Walt Disney, which is making these animated films, becomes very important by the time we are into, uh, say, mid-30s. And in fact, um, they had a particular relationship with Nazism, you know, and I think they made a film which was uh, Donald Duck and those kind of uh, figures that uh, gets uh, created. So, uh, so one is um, uh, this power of laughter through which you lampoon uh, in American uh, comedy. Um, and there, uh, um, one key device is, of course, cinema, film. And as you know, uh, Charlie Chaplin's movies are already around at this time. I think some of the Charlie Chaplin movies are, I think, 20s or maybe even earlier. Uh, so Chaplin, Chaplin's movie becomes very important in this thing. And Walter Benjamin, uh, talks about Charlie Chaplin's uh, movies and how, and also Charlie Chaplin, okay, you can say ideologically he did identify himself on the left or uh, he was, so a lot of people thought he's a communist. But but the ideological uh, label that he's a leftist or a communist, that's not really what is key here. What is key here is the particular method that uh, is used in his films. And as you know, we have covered some ground uh, on film we have covered some ground in the earlier sessions, in the earlier readings on the use of the montas. Uh, think of the reading by Arvatov, um, where Arvatov is uh, uh, where Arvatov is saying that we should look at painting uh, the way a carpenter looks at a piece of wood. So work of art, a work of philosophy, maybe poetry should be looked upon as a very bodily thing, not just an embodiment, a bodily thing, the way the carpenter thinks of a piece of wood. Uh, now, um, uh, so Charlie Chaplin's films seems to be embodying uh, some of the themes that the avant-garde is talking about. And in Germany, uh, it seems to be something which you can counterpose to the entire fascist buildup, right? In fact, Charlie Chaplin visits uh, Germany uh, in uh, I don't know the year, you know, 1933, I think. But but when when but when uh, the Nazis are in power, right? I think it is 33, 34, uh, stuff like that. Um, so um, and at the time, you could see that the Nazis are attacking Charlie Chaplin, you know, as a Jewish uh, communist, uh, uh, you know. Uh, agent of finance uh, capital, you know that kind of stuff uh, that uh, that that Charlie Chaplin is is attacked with. So uh, as you know, I'm sure. Is there anyone here who has not seen a Charlie Chaplin film? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure everyone has uh, seen it. Uh, so uh, has. Uh, has anyone uh, watched this film by Charlie Chaplin called City Lights? Maybe uh, um, 
I think City Lights is it. Oh, that's great. That's great. Some people have. Okay. Um, it's a. I think I think City Lights is a slightly later film, and by the time he comes to City Lights, um, uh, he's uh, he he's I think slowly going towards a narrative form. It's the same narrative form which the avant-garde was denouncing. You know, earlier in those in those readings that we did, uh, where the Soviet avant-garde was uh, lambasting. Uh, painting, expressionist painting as all bourgeois, uh, the notion of the sublime, the notion of the beautiful, all of that is being rejected, right? So it feels like by the time Charlie Chaplin is doing uh, City Lights, even though the theme uh, politically, ideologically is, I think, quite kind of, okay, you know, be with the underdog, that kind of a thing. But yet the technique uh, and the way the film is crafted um seems like and not just because there's a love story there you know i mean <laughs> i don't think uh, you know uh, one can say that uh, you know all love stories are necessarily bourgeois i think i think it's not because of that reason that i suspect city lights would be more um uh, <laughs> like a like a bourgeois sentimentality not 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 that so but the earlier films as you know uh of uh, of chaplin um are uh, in a way, quite mechanical, right? So, you know, the way he moves, um, uh, it's not a smooth kind of a thing. You know, it feels like a mechanical movement. And suddenly he falls and suddenly gets up and suddenly he's doing this, doing that. You know, all kinds of what looks like a mechanical uh, kind of a movement in the, in the, in the, in the films. Um, uh, and uh, that... And in fact, when, you know, when one watches those, I mean, one gets used to uh, Charlie Chaplin movies and we know it's like that only, you know, like, <laughs> like you say that, right? It's the, that's the way it is and we get used to it and then we don't notice these things. But if you were to actually notice it, you know, then you see it is a very jerky movement there. Right? Uh, it's a jerky movement. So, which means that the smooth flow is kind of broken and then you can have something, a movement which, a sudden movement interspersed or sudden movements, many sudden movements put together um, becomes a flow, quote unquote flow. It's not even a flow. Because that flowiness of a flow is broken in the flow that a Charlie Chaplin movie scene creates, right? Now, this is what um, what Benjamin likes. Walter Benjamin. I'm talking Walter Benjamin likes, and um, 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 so and 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 through that, so there is a. There's a, there's a, it's, it's of course uh, backed up by technology, right? The technique, a particular kind of a film technique, a particular kind of a technique of cinema with which you are doing it. So one is the laughter part that uh, it just evokes laughter. Um, and of course, we know that with Charlie Chaplin, uh, the character of the tramp is someone who might be really uh, a beautiful soul inside, you know, the tramp maybe is a beautiful soul inside, but he's so effaced. He's so, it might sound slightly cliche to say this, he might be so poor and such a, you know, in today's <laughs> language, we say he's a marginalized character or someone, you know, from, one from the margins, uh, right? Um, <laughs> That uh, if you remember that scene, uh, I don't know which movie it is. Uh, it starts with uh, they're trying to inaugurate a um, um, uh, statue in a city square, and uh, the statue is all covered uh, because the minister uh, will come and like pull that uh, that uh, that big curtain or something with which it's covered. It will bring down that, and then everybody will clap. And then say, okay, now this is from today onwards, the statue is here, and you know, this becomes part of the city life. 
Um, um, so, um, so when they, if you, if if you have seen the that scene, uh, when they pull that curtain, everybody is gathered. All the dignitaries of the city or the country are there, and the press is there. Everything is. It's a very formal um, uh, inaugural ceremony. All the notables are there. It's a, you know, very formal thing. And when they pull the the, the curtain down, <laughs> of course, the statue one can then see. But down there, there is uh, Charlie Chaplin, who was sleeping for the night inside there. You know, he was feeling very warm underneath that uh, curtain. <laughs> and then he suddenly like wakes up. And then he says, oh, where am I? You know, and then he looks and says, oh my God, there's all these people there. You know, maybe the prime minister or someone is there. And then he doesn't know who he is. And then, of course, suddenly the... The guards will try to like uh, grab him, and then he tries to run away, and then his uh, his uh, his jacket or his trousers get stuck in one of the. You know, I think in the in the 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 statues, of course, of a very important person, right? So uh, so something gets stuck in that, you know, in the in his hand or something. So it it's completely lampoons and if the entire thing, the entire statue, the statue inaugural ceremony, everything is lumpooned through that, where this little tramp, this vagrant, this vagabond is now the center of the entire scene and everybody has to run in order to control him or grab him or punish him or kill him or something like that. So, um, so one is the lumpooning this entire, whatever you want to say, the dominant narrative or something through the tramp. Uh, but the other thing is the character, the person, or which is this tramp, which is that there is because he's just a tramp, he just sleeps there. So maybe the, that last night he slept there, next night he will sleep on at the bus stop or something like that. So, complete efface, effacing of his there's no person there really, like you know, the person that we talk about in terms of the ego. Uh, he's not there. So you cannot really, uh, you know, interact with him, right? Because he does not have the personhood, you know, right? Because he does not have an ego. He's so egoless. I mean, when you are egoless, maybe you become a very kind and very loving person. But this is beyond that, you know, that even as a, to be a loving and a kind person, I think you need to have your own personhood. So with, with, with the tram, Charlie Chaplin is able to create this character. It feels like the there's no surface to the character, you know? I mean, there might be a lot of internal depth, but there's no sub, but you need the surface also, right? But there's a, if there's no surface, uh, but only maybe the depth. Now, this was a powerful kind of a theme here. It's a powerful character. Now, think of such a figure. And then think of Hunger, Ernst Hunger's hero who falls in battle, right? Fighting for nation and this, that, such, you know, high transcendental things, even though it's a transcendence full of immanence, but it's very heavy. Let's just say it's heavy, you know, whereas this is this kind of a buffoon, a fool, this tramp, which is like an idiot, he's, he's, he's also very idiotic, right? I mean, you know, uh, he's, 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 he doesn't want to take anything seriously. So here, uh, <clears throat> you can say, uh, in the 20s and 30s, these are the two uh, powerful tropes. One will take you towards Nazism, Hitler, uh, the... What are they called? SS or something? No, the the you know the 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 Nazi uh, so, you know guards soldiers you know very tyrannical and all of that. Um, yeah, so that's one. On the other hand, you have the tramp of Chaplin, and uh, in the twenties already, Charlie Chaplin movies are. Uh, running in Germany. Uh, I think 30s, uh, he himself visits Germany. Um, so the 
Soviet avant-garde out of which some of these things are coming and Walter Benjamin picks this up. Uh, <clears throat> um, okay, it is something, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, Shane, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, is, is, is given us something. Maybe others can also see it. Uh, so, uh, so that's the thing. So that's one theme that, uh, that, uh, that you need to, uh, cover. The other is, of course, the, the circus, you know, the circus, you know, I mean, think of the. Diamond Circus, <laughs> the Great Bombay Circus. Um, I guess there are a lot of people here who have not seen a circus. Has anyone been to a circus? I mean, we all know that the Russians are great circus people. And I think uh, we have the Miranam Joker, no, Joker film. The Joker film, uh, uh, you know, um, oh, many times. Wow. Um, Ishita, many times. Which, which one have you seen? Can you name the circus, Ishita, if you have watched it many times? Um, so the, so the Raj Kapoor, uh, film, um, you know, they talk about, uh, because India was very close to Russia. So you have those songs, uh, Sarpe Lal Topi Rusi, you know, so the Russia thing. And I think there was also a Russian, uh, characters in that movie. Uh, but now I think that, okay, you know, the circus and the Joker, even in Bollywood, uh, which always, uh, uh, seems to be connected to Russia, uh, is maybe connected to this entire uh, long tradition coming out of the avant-garde. <laughs> uh, you know, okay, maybe now here we have some connection between <laughs> the avant-garde and Bollywood now, <laughs> finally. Um, <laughs> um, uh, finally, yeah. <laughs> uh, and maybe they are not just Joker, maybe there are other films also which had this uh thing about uh about uh, uh, the circus and the russian connection so um so the circus also becomes very important around this time and the clown and also the fact that the circus does not have a like if you have a play or a you know dr whatever drama natak you know then you have a um you have a uh Okay, yeah, Gemini. Okay, yeah, Gemini Circus. Yeah, yeah. I thought there was a big one, Diamond Circus, Bombay, some circus. Um, I think even in Delhi, it comes every year, even now. But I think circus has really, uh, is it's, it's dying, I think. But I guess still some places you can see, really. Uh, so unlike a, unlike the unlike a play in which it stays, and then the stage has a, what is it called? Green room or something, you know? And the audience does not have access to the green room. So, so there's some kind of a, uh, some kind of a, uh, some kind of a jumbo. This is jumbo circus, okay. Um, some kind of a, uh, expecting power cut. Okay. Okay. Somebody says he's expecting a pocket. Um, anyway, so um, so um, so there's a there's a there's a stage and then there's a, a green room. So there is some kind of a, a non-transparency, if you want to call it that, with a play with the circus. As you know, all around there is. Um, what do you call circus audience or spectators? I think, yeah, all around, right? So there's a kind of a transparency and the tricks are out in the open, you know? So the, so the clown, the joker will come and do strange things there, you know, and they will be also very pedestrian and kind of very, 
you might say cheap also you know if you are very classy kind of whatever snobbish kind of a person <laughs> you might think this is very uh very dirty or something you know right they will pat on the bum or something like that um so the circus also the joker also becomes very a theme which is taken up and becomes very popular uh in a kind of a thing but because these are extremely polarized ideological times uh these otherwise very innocent traditions of maybe uh, you know laughter being a clown comedy circus uh you know okay it reminds me that in india we have the mot ki kuwa have, has anyone seen mot ki kuwa where you have that guy on a bike mot ki kuwa <laughs> uh and it's really scary if you have seen it mokekua it's also part of the circus so also this risk and danger which is also a theme that that walter benjamin will take up you know this thing about risk and danger uh okay somebody has seen mokekua you know and in fact i think there was a thing in india that they want to ban mokekua because it's really dangerous and the guys uh you know the things you see in those india gate not india gate yeah the india gate republic day parades with those uh air force people they will do those uh, stunts or whatever it is called daredevil show i think the motki kuwa guy is far better in those daredevil kind of shows than those uh you know defense forces guys who are very you know who are were pretty boring i think the motki kuwa guy so uh, so there's also this risk and danger now risk danger and this very close to death scenario of course again go takes us back to some of the themes of war and violence that is very much popular in germany and in europe at this time after the first world war but this is risk and danger um in a very different sense in a very pedestrian sense in a very popular sense in a sense which is not really aligned with the state aligned with state power aligned with reproducing um structures of dominance um and <clears throat> and 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 in that climate it could also be very anti fascist culture it could be part of a larger anti fascist culture anti fascist culture now i am reminded i might be wrong but you know um uh, so is where in india the left <laughs> is strong now i'm uh, this is a um, you know this is a i'm just trying to make it contextual uh, so i might get it wrong so is where left is strong in india is it that the circus culture is better grounded there i don't know that you know maybe in bengal and but definitely in bengal magic is very popular so because even magic is a innocent fun you know and it keeps you on the edge uh i mean i school kids i don't know if you guys i mean i the school i studied in we used to have a lot of magic shows you know and when that magician is about to bring out something from his box or from his bag because he just put some pigeons there right now you don't know what he's going to come out with he, he put pigeons he will maybe come out with a, come with a he will get a rabbit out of the bag <laughs> you know so that entire suspense that entire thrill um that is there in magic you know uh, i haven't myself seen references to magic in benjamin but uh, you know i'm i'm uh, but there might be you know it might fall into as part of a popular uh, kind of a um, uh, popular culture so uh, so what you see then here is that this is attempt to explore other kind of uh, forms of recreation entertainment that uh entails a kind of a you know um uh, extreme emotions um of risk of danger of laughter but which is not really connected to war because what fascism is giving the masses is something which you can be really immersed in you know it is giving you some uh, giving you a powerful inner experience war as an inner experience it touches the soul is technology 
if if uh, Aditi, I'll just I'll just come back to you. Huh? I I can't I can't see this uh, text so clearly uh, like this. But 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 I'll 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 come to it. I'll come to it. So um um, um uh, but yeah, please please feel free to put the questions there uh, as we go along. Aditi, you you know please uh, um uh, you know you can uh, please do this. Uh, I'll I'll come back to it and maybe uh, take it this thing uh, later. Uh, right. So, so that is the search that is going on here around this time. Um, the other thing, and that is the uh, the other part here, uh, is uh, Benjamin's uh, obsession with. You know what? You might be surprised. Uh, Benjamin's obsession with gambling. How, what is gambling? What kind of, you know, how does gambling touch you personally at a psychic level? You know, um, what is the kind of, um, you know, um, psychic curve on which you are placed when you are gambling? Because you can be really into it, right? You are about to earn a lot of money or you are about to lose your, all your money. Uh, if you're talking about gambling at an at an epic scale, then you are about to lose, lose your 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 property, <laughs> you know, um, and it is just an addiction. You might as well not gamble, but it is so powerful. The pull, the pull of gambling, um, that uh, right. In any case, so. Uh, so what is happening? I'm just giving you a sense. Yeah, today that's what we are doing. I'm just giving you a sense of the overall kind of scene, uh, let's say on the left as well as on the right, in which this Hunger thing is playing out, in which this entire total mobilization of Hunger, this uh, kind of um, all the things that we have done, exultant anarchy, and you know, the way it's playing out in the larger domain. So we'll do a few um, um, uh, readings from uh, Benjamin, um, uh, and uh, uh, I'll um, I'll, uh, uh, I'll I'll give you the readings um, in a bit. And one reading we'll do some. There are some fragments that uh, he has, you know, um, that I will. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will send it to you uh, through this medium. But the one that I already mentioned here is his uh, famous essay called "The What Is It? The Work of Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction." Uh, some of you might have heard about it. Uh, work of art. In the age of mechanical reproduction, uh, well, does the mechanical word here remind you of Chaplin now, right? So you see, there are these obvious uh, uh, connections here, but uh, but also it will take you uh, the 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 kind of readings you've done on the Soviet avant-garde uh, that will help you in because this is a later text. I think this is nineteen. 33 maybe you know um, I think maybe yeah uh, so it's a it's a later text um, so um, so 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 in, in a way I think this class is completely prepared to read uh, Walter Benjamin's uh, um, this essay by Walter Benjamin the work of art in the age of mechanical reproduction it's completely prepared but the interesting thing let me tell you, uh, mostly people would have directly read this essay by Benjamin and would not have really gone through the the the, the other writings that we have done, you know, uh, Arvatov or Rotchenko or Kino I or Eisenstein. Or I don't know if you, some of you remember, I think I gave you this essay by, uh, what is it called, Spoxky or something, no? It's a Russian name. The essay is titled... What is the essay title? Can someone remind me? 
uh, you know, the term uh, where the 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 concept of defamiliarization is is there. Um, uh, that essay is called. It's a very important essay. Um, Mm. Uh, it's called, does anybody remember that essay? Um, it is called, let me see, uh, it is called, um, yeah, something on, so it's, it's uh, the theme of, theme of defamiliarization, which is where the, where the, where the movie camera uh allows us to look at things from a perspective which the human eye cannot so you can defamiliarize anything that you have you can see right and this is i think i have i think I've, we have covered this so many times in the different lectures earlier so uh slokski i think it's called um i think it's a uh, um um so um uh yeah so yeah yeah viktor uh, slovsky and what is the title of the essay kritika um i think i've given you this reading haven't i oh yeah art as technique thank you so much art as technique yeah you see again the technique word the technique word again takes us to um uh, the mechanical sense right technique you know it like Kind of a thing. So uh, I will. I'll have lots more to say on this in the later classes. So right now, that's what we'll do. Uh, we'll do this uh, uh, small fragmentary pieces by Benjamin, like really fragmentary, like two para, three para kind of a thing. And then we'll do the work of A's and work of art in the A's of mechanical reproduction. And then we'll do Hannah Arendt's um, um, essay, which will be the first chapter um, from. The A's of Totalitarianism, Volume Three, uh, and that is a uh, that is the chapter on on the masses <laughs> and the mob, <laughs> and this is this is kind of getting interesting because for some reason, as an as an offhand example. We had discussed about mob lynching in the class, and I had no idea that uh, we'll have someone like Hannah Arendt who has taken this up. So the masses, but also the mob. Um, so that's her, her classic work on totalitarianism. So we'll do that, and uh, but we have already. So we already have the the um, uh, Ernst Block uh, piece. Uh, have people, um, um, uh, Shane was earlier suggesting to me that we should just do this. If you guys want to just do this, I can completely do that in the next class. Um, uh, but but this is a dense text. So if you want to do this, Ernst Block text, I don't know why Shane want, wanted me to do this. I mean, of course, it's part of the thing and we haven't really done a thorough discussion of this. Uh, it's a very important essay. So I am... Uh, I'm good with doing that, um, uh, you know, but I want you guys to have really at least attempted to go through this text. It's a it's a very densely written piece. Uh, the style is, I think, slightly esoteric or difficult. Uh, so, and then I have given you this other essay on, what was that? Ernst Junger, uh, the world, the transformed world. Did people find that essay interesting? I think that's a brilliant, interesting essay, which gives you a lot of references, a lot of pictures. Uh, can I hear this? If uh, people have read it or intend to read it or already found it very interesting. I'm talking about the, the Junger, the transformed world. Uh,
I think it's a yeah, it's a it's a German writer. I think it's a translated uh, this thing. Well, I haven't. I'm not able to see if anybody has responded to that. Uh, but but that's a brilliant essay, and uh, um, and that has that has lots in it, you know. Um, um, yeah, so we have then these are the kind of things then we are dealing with, you know. Um, um, so so from the so from the so please read that then you know please read that uh, the world transformed essay on Junga because there are a lot of uh, real references from the first world war or planes started flying what did the radio do the invention of the radio um, <clears throat> and how that kind of created a different notion of the people of the public uh, right uh, those are that's a very important theme uh, so please read that and then yeah so uh, so let's do that um, I um, yeah so uh, so for so if you want to do on block we'll do on block uh, but otherwise then for the next class we have uh, these two readings um, the Walter Benjamin essay um, the work of art and the um, Hannah Arendt uh, chapter, uh, first chapter from volume three uh, of uh, of uh, Origins of Totalitarianism by Hannah Arendt. Uh, yeah, so which will be the first chapter on the masses. So, uh, um, yeah, so uh, uh, anything else? Uh, we uh, uh any any questions or something uh, um, oh yeah aditya maybe i can yeah so any questions let me read what aditi has uh, written here uh can others see what aditi has written can everybody see or only i can see Okay. Bhaktin. Oh, Aditi. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, we all can see it. Oh, great. Um, so, uh, um, um, yeah, the carnival. Um, um, yeah, I think so. Um, um, <clears throat> the... Uh, the carnival definitely is a okay. Um, uh, the carnival of Bhaktin is definitely a reference point here, uh, but I think he wrote this uh, slightly later. I think uh, um, um, Bhaktin, um, yeah, the carnival um, <clears throat> uh, is definitely one of the key themes here. Carnival and uh, and the um, maybe even millenarian movements, you know, like the tribal hull or something, which is like a it's very carnivalesque uh, kind of thing. So yes, that is a that is a good reference point, Aditi. I completely agree with you. Um, so who knows? You know, we might go in that direction uh, after we do the set of readings. Um, so. Uh, anything else? Yeah. So, anybody try to read on block? Shane must have done it.
<laughs> whatever you write will be <laughs> on record or something. So you got to be careful when you say, yes, you have done on block. Well, you tried. Okay, Shen, you tried. Okay. Um, so, um, well, what I find it interesting is with others, others, others. Come on, you had a long break. You had a holiday. You're still on holiday. Um, no, you know, others, nobody tried to read this guy. Shane, can you do you want to say something about this thing? Can you maybe you can write a few lines or something? Um, I have touched on the block piece earlier. Talking about the peasant, you know, the worker, the urban areas. Okay, so some people have read. Some people have read. Uh, you see, what I find interesting, I think what we need to focus on, on Splunk, you see, it's a long essay, you know. So what I would like you to focus on, good to hear <coughs> Aditi Deva, Aditi Deva also tried to read it, uh, is I think he, he breaks it down uh, kind of... Uh, into more sociological categories, you know, makes it simpler, um, uh, not simpler in a simplistic sense, you know, by retaining all the complexity of the of the of the scene, and uh, so he really brings in the all this middle class and petty bourgeois and the peasant and the worker, makes it very real, you know, because that's what we see in society, you know, there are all these different categories uh, within society, so he breaks it down. And uh, say where he's talking about whether the youth, uh, you know, a lot of people today are, okay, I don't know today, what is today really, but maybe till like say 10, 20 years ago, people thought, oh, okay, maybe, you know, uh, um, with the, I don't know, fall of the Berlin Wall or something, the or the 70s or something, the countercultural youth and the youth would like, I don't know, punk music, rock music, wants to go generation X, generation Y. So the youth was supposed to be that kind of a, uh, uh, whatever, futuristic or corporate futurist, futuristic kind of thing. Uh, so the youth would kind of go towards not really old, outmoded, tradition, karva chauth kind of a thing, but would be really cool and happening and all of that. Um, but um, uh, um, but but here, when he's talking about where the youth would go, it feels like the youth would as well go with not really conservatism and tradition, but with the again yes the fascists you know who are not really conservative you know they are right wing but they are not really right wing conservatives right they are futuristic and all of that or would they go with the left? Uh, so, so there are those interesting passages. So he really uh, kind of uh, brings a kind of a sociological classification of different sections of society and connects that with the <clears throat> ideological uh, predilections, the ideological, you know, directions that they might take. Um, um, you know, there's a lot in it. Uh, anything you want to point out? I'm not able to just... I can read something from here if you guys want me to do. Um, um, there's a term in page 26 that he uses called uh, participation mystic. Uh, you know, the I think somebody's written this book called The uh, Feminine Mystic. Or the beauty mystic, or something. And this is the participation mystic. Um, you know, participation. 
he suddenly mythologized here when he says participation mystic and and that again takes us to this kind of a um, thing which was very common in this time where the people uh, is in complete communion with the leader so there is no representation possible you know there's no no possibility of representation because the leader seems to have merged with the people the people and the leader are like one and the same so participation of the people so there are no formal kind of uh, something like electoral process in which people participate uh, right uh, but the participation itself is like you are in a ecstatic immersion in the like a, you're like a devotee you know you're like doing bhakti or something like that right so you see this he uses these terms here um and uh, there's something about gothic dreams against proletarian realities um So, so let's do one thing. Uh, <clears throat> we'll uh, um, block will be there. Um, <clears throat> let us. Uh, I want everyone to go through this, but uh, let's. Uh, um, um, we'll let's do the <clears throat> let's do the Benjamin and the Aaron piece. Um, also, because I think in terms of readability they're more accessible errant is i think more accessible uh the benjamin essay is not that long and it's kind of nicely written um so and uh but i think i've given you a kind of a introduction to benjamin already uh today um and uh and i think that should help you to uh go through the benjamin text now a little bit on uh hannah errant um, before you read her text, um, Arendt um, <clears throat> um, you have already encountered Arendt earlier in the Bodies in Alliance piece by Butler. We have talked about Arendt earlier, so you have some sense of this thing. Um, Where Arendt comes in, and then Arendt is there all through. I don't know whether she personally knew Benjamin. She might have, you know. So she's very much in the scene, right? She completely knows all this. She knows Benjamin is writing this. She's a Jew herself. So was Benjamin, and uh, she's uh, thrown out of the country. She becomes an exile. Um, uh, you know, she migrates to the U.S. She's a refugee. She's a stateless person. Uh, so she has lived through that and when Israel is founded later, I think she does visit Israel, but the Israeli Jews, uh, the Zionists did not like her, right? She's a Jew and and when after, uh, after the Nazi regime falls after the Second World War, um, uh, some of the Nazi uh, perpetrators, uh, Nazi leaders, you know, the the Nazi leaders, uh, they uh, uh, they are arrested. You know, some of them flee. One guy was in Argentina. You know, one of the key guys who who was responsible for for killing millions, of non, like a lot of Jews. You know, in the gas chambers. So Eichmann, I'm talking about Eichmann. Eichmann is brought to Israel, and there's a trial. Um, and Hannah Arendt is there in Israel in the trial, and she writes a book, and then it becomes very unpopular <laughs> with the Israelis, um, right? Uh, so, uh, so one of the things that we need to keep in mind while reading that chapter about Hannah Arendt is that she's really uh, quite uh, perturbed by this 
to start to start with let's say this one uh dominant uh dominant uh, uh what should i say uh dominant trend not trend i need a heavier word i'm using a <laughs> light word here you know which was there which is the uh the lack of which is where there is a kind of a where okay so, so she's really against this notion of totality let's say you know what i mean so <clears throat> hunger is also talking about total mobilization the worker for hunger is that figure the worker soldier in which all of society everything in society everything in life at the time is congealed in that figure of the worker it's like saying today you know so you can think of so for every age say so maybe in the earlier feudal age it was the peasant which was that kind of figure it's a peasant society so we call the entire society peasant society that does not mean there were no artisans and there were no i don't know artists or something but the entire society is characterized through that one lens so this kind of a way of understanding understanding describing society or the fact that this kind of a society which produces this kind of a figure which totalizes everything that kind of a privileged agent so right from so what is the farmer doing the farmer is doing farming but everything is all converging towards this one point similarly for an errant even the marxists the communists are doing that right they're like doing this totalizing thing the worker the proletariat you know she wants to retain this what you might say separation of power kind of a thing you know not really that you know but something like that so that there is a representation possible or necessary not is possible so that the representation is necessary so that's why she wants to retain that space of appearance of freedom that space has to be there you cannot say that the economy culture the 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 psyche the social the religious everything will be fused into one no you know and she's really fearful of that and that's what she thinks at the at the most abstract level you can say that for her totalitarian society is really where all these different spheres of life and society gets collapsed into this one hegemonic universal figure so the and that's why she wants to keep the distinction between the public and the private alive because you see i mean say so when we were reading the butler essay no we really want to do away with that it's okay this is a false distinction this that why should the private and particularly when the private gets associated with the feminine it feels like you are also reinforcing patriarchy through those kind of divisions right all that but arend has a very different concern now the masses are mobilized in such a way under both communism and fascism for arent <clears throat> that the masses are like enthused you know they are like excited they are like aroused and in that arousal of the masses you know that fervor she sees there's a problem there you know and and the masses will directly say on the fascism will directly then uh the the origin the you know one of the key themes under the nazi germany was apparently in every uh, cup or pen or or bottle and every little thing that you use uh, apparently it used to be written germany awake or something you know this awake like swami vivekananda tell, told that the youth should awake the hindu youth should awake <laughs> this kind of awake you know jago jago the jago business where everyone would be jago she is very skeptical about this jago business you know skeptical about this jago business so uh, um the masses are mobilized 
you know. Uh, well, it does sound like so. Is he an elitist? Does she fear the mass or something? We can ask. You can ask those questions. But uh, I think, uh, yeah. So you want to read this? Um, um, and there are. It's a very, you know, um, well written. It's a thorough text. Um, I don't really agree with her, but uh, <laughs> but we'll uh, we'll do that text. It's very important. Uh, and also. See uh, the distinction between philosophy and politics. Um, <clears throat> that also is a theme that she will cover. Um, the distinction, um, yeah, between 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 philosophy and politics, um, between the public and the private, um, and 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 in a way. If in the way we are going about doing this, uh, some of the covering some of these topics here, if you think that where, where is the, she's kind of giving the third perspective here, you know, and that's why it's very crucial that we must do her. Um, so, and also she's in conversation with all these other guys, someone like um, the people on the left, people on the right, uh, she's uh, this thing. So, uh, so TK, um, uh, let's do that. And I think we are going towards the end of this uh, lecture here. Uh, um, the sun is playing hide and seek here. You see that flash of light, which just came and went. Um, so, um, anything else we, we have lined up? I'm kind of uh, uh, going towards the end and uh, Shane. Uh, I have to ask Shane, you know, how we are doing. Is everyone there? How many? I don't know how many were there. Uh, I think we need to take uh, this uh, attendance, Devavati. I hope we can do that. You know, if I get a list of those names, as you had done uh, earlier. Um, oh, I can actually show you this. This is the iron book. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a nice color book. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Everybody could follow this, I hope, no? Like the, I mean, the technically, I mean, the the, the video and the audio particularly. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so uh, so I think we are, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I have not heard from any one of you here. I don't see any comments. So I guess, so we'll, uh, so we'll just talk about, uh, We'll move on now. Um, say we would uh, think about uh, the next uh, class. Um, um, oh yeah, class again. Yeah, that's right, Devavati. Uh, yeah, that's right. Block Arendt, yes, and Walter Benjamin. That's right. Um, um, so... Uh, um, yeah, that's what we'll do, um, Devavati, um, Benjamin, and uh, yeah, Hannah Arendt, and this thing, and uh, Block uh, as well. So, uh, so the next class, um, next class, uh, uh, today is what, 17th, 18th. So let's do it uh, uh, Monday, uh, next Monday. How does that look to everyone? Monday at 3. Is that, is that good?
Ya. So, uh, everybody is fine. Everybody, please, right here now. Let's see. Let's see the. I can actually see who all is watching it, I think, right? Or maybe I can't. I don't know. So, uh, so okay. Um, that's, yeah. Yeah, 3 p.m. That's right, Kritika. Um, so, great. So, let's do that. I hope this was a. Uh, <laughs> this was uh, we uh, we managed it well. I think this. What do we call it? I don't want to call it like some. I don't know what is this distant long distance learning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, this is a long distance learning or <laughs> um, uh, whatever it this is. Um, so this is a class. I think we just call it a class. As though, as though, yeah. So, uh, so okay, so I take leave of you. I hope all of you are fine. These are very risky times, and I hope everybody is fine and everybody in their homes and uh, hostels are fine. Um, we have so much to talk about, maybe some other time on coronavirus and everything. I heard Agamben has written an interesting piece on... Uh, on this, on, on this coronavirus, maybe you guys want to read the Agamben piece. I guess it's a small piece. It's written somewhere. So maybe you want to read that. And so I think there's some kind of debate on this coronavirus and, and what's going on, surveillance and capitalism, this, that. Maybe some of you guys can take this as a theme when you do your research and all, right? So... Um, so great. So I take leave of you then, everyone. Good to connect to all of you after this long gap and in this risky, risky, chancy, chancy world in which we are living in. So, um, so, so I will now um, say bye to all of you. I will click on end stream with your permission. <laughs>